Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. There were four little rabbits. Four little rabbits. And their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, giving her brood a word of warning. You may go into the fields, into the fields, or down the lane, down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Why, Why Mama? Mama? When you were babies, so very small, you had a father who loved us all. He tried to give us a life of ease with gifts of lettuce and parsley and peas it was his pleasure both night and morn to bring us cabbage and carrots and corn turnips and broccoli, broccoli. lentils and lima beans, lima beans. rhubarb and radishes, radishes scallions and celery celery And then your poor father had an accident. Mr. McGregor caught him. No time to bid him a last goodbye. Your father soon became a rabbit pie. Now you know why you may go into the fields, into the fields, into the fields or down the, down, lane, the, down the lane, but never into Mr. McGregor's garden. Yes, Mama. Peter? Celery. Uh, I mean, certainly, Mama. And you won't lose your jacket again, not like last time. No, Mama. Oh, dear. <laughs> Then off went Mrs. Rabbit to the baker's for some brown bread. Let's go! Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty and tempted by forbidden vegetables, ran straightway to Mr. McGregor's garden. squeezed under McGregor's gate. What a garden! And he ate some lettuce. And he ate some more lettuce. 
Yes. see Mr. McGregor. I see string beans. And then he ate some string beans. Hey, Big Ears. Want some advice, kid? Learn how to fly. Mr. McGregor is hungry. Bait bunny a la mode. <laughs> Peter thought they were joking. Blue Jays love a joke. <laughs> Radishes. So he ate some radishes. Then feeling rather sick, he went looking for some parsley. Should he meet, but... Peter, be caw, caw, cautious. Peter, be wary. Better take care. You could get caw, caw, caught. Mr. Mr. McGregor is right over there. there. <gasps> Mr. McGregor. was most dreadfully frightened. One shoe among the cabbages. And the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on all four legs and went faster. Most rabbits run better without shoes. Stop! Please! I think he might have gotten away had he not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the buttons of his jacket. Now you're in trouble. We told you. Do you still want a jacket? <sighs> a bluebird sings a peaceful thing. Sing along. Breezes say, come on, let's play. And when they say, let's play, even the ants obey. And we do, too. It's the only thing to do on this kind of a day. It's my kind of a, your kind of a, our kind of a, what kind of a? I give up. Don't give up. Peter, be hopeful. Peter, take heart. Peter, believe me, you can escape. But you've got to be smart. 
Peter be clever. Peter be quick. Don't give up, you'll get away. If you think of a trick. Peter be quick, Peter be quick. Think of a trick, think of a trick. With a superhuman, super rabbit effort, Peter escaped and rushed into the tool shed. McGregor was quite sure Peter was in the tool shed, perhaps hidden beneath a flower pot. Peter sat down to rest. He was afraid and dripping wet. The gate? I have to find the gate so I can get out and go home. But I don't know where it is. I don't know where I am. And Peter began to wander about, going lippity-lippity. Not very fast. Looking all around. And he thought, if I don't find the gate, I'll have to stay here forever. Summertime? Wintertime? Until I'm very, very old. Unless Mr. McGregor gets me first. <gasps> oh, no. I don't want to be a pie. I want to go home. While I'm making lunch, you can play. Yes, yes Mama. Mama. You can go under the house or down the path. But don't go into Mrs. McGregor's pantry. Your father had an accident there. It involved a... I want to go home. There's a gate that leads to a road that goes to a place not far from here. The home I hold so dear. And yet I fear from the way things look I may never get to the home so dear to me, the place where I can be both safe and free. For I've lost the way to the gate that leads to the road that takes me home. So here I'll stay.
the home so near seems as far from here as a distant shining star so near and yet so far so never get home again. Never. I give up. I give up. I give up. No, no! Don't give up. Never give up. But I can't find the gate. It's right over there. Where? I can't see it. There, under the big willow tree. I can't see the willow tree either. We can. We'll take you there. You will? Peter will help you. Soon you'll be free. We'll be an arrow pointing the way. Straight, Straight to, to the, the tree. tree. followed the sparrows across the garden, Peter was happy. He was thinking of home. When? <gasps> Hi! Quick! It's the cat! <gasps> At a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans, a white cat was staring at some goldfish. Beyond her, Peter could see the willow tree where the gate was. Peter hoped he could sneak past her. His mother had warned him about cats. But the cat didn't seem to notice Peter. She was too busy trying to decide what to have for lunch. Am I in the mood for mice? Or am I in the mood for fish? Spicy mice are awfully nice, but a fresh caught fish is twice as delicious. So, decisions, decisions. Am I in the mood for fin? Or do I have a yen for wren? A tasty fin is fine in a pinch, and a tender wren is a treat now and then. Decisions, decisions. Planning meals is an endless chore. Each new day calls for one meal more. I've often wished I could break the eating habit. <sighs> but since I never got my wish, I have to choose another dish. So am I in the mood for a morsel of mouse, or a fillet of fish, or a brisket of bird, or a plump young rabbit? Peter heard the sound of a hoe. He climbed up on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. Mr. McGregor! The gate! Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow, whispering, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid! started running to the gate as fast as he could go. Stop, thief! Uh, 
was safe at last, outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes as a scarecrow to frighten the birds. I like this one. Small, but nice. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired he flopped down upon the nice soft sand and shut his eyes. It's Peter. Where's his jacket? It's yours. <laughs> oh dear. It was a second jacket and pair of shoes he'd lost in a week. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. But Peter, I am sorry to say, was not very well. His mother put him to bed and brought him a dose of chamomile tea. Open wide. Wait, I, I wanted to tell you. I didn't lose my jacket, because I know where it is. Where? In Mr. McGregor's garden. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm sorry, Mama. I just wanted to see the garden and eat some vegetables. But Mr. McGregor chased me, and I was almost eaten by a cat. And I got lost, and I thought I'd become a pie. And never see you, or my home, or my sisters again. Well, you're home. And I hope you've learned your lesson. And I'll tell you a secret. If this ever happens again... It won't. But if it should, through no fault of your own, and you're frightened, and you want your family and your friends, remember this. When the home so dear and the ones you love seem as distant as a star, just close your eyes. Surprise, they are closer far than you think they are, for you'll find them here and here. They're far and yet they're near, so far and yet so near. Glad I'm home. Open wide. Yeah. And they lived happily ever after. I wish I could tell you that Peter never lost his jacket again, but well, you know how it is. Oh dear.